Well, welcome everybody. My name is Steve Kaplan, one of the Township Trustees. It's my honor to introduce our Township Supervisor, who will be delivering her sixth annual Township Address. In the audience, we have many dignitaries, including Kathy Shaughnessy, Township Clerk, and we have State Representative Mike McCready, County Commissioner John Scott, and many of our department heads, including Police Chief Mike Patton and Fire Chief Jay Wiseman. Our former Deputy Chief is here, Joe Chapin. Denise Mayer is the head of the, uh, the Human Resources Division. She's present. And we have Lisa Hobart, one of the best assessors in the state, and her Chief Assistant, Dan Sears. We also have some of our board and commission members, including uh, Adria Brown from the Woodlands Board, and Sarah Oltar Schwartz from the Wetland Board, and David Robertson, no term limits for him, the uh, chair of our Zoning Board of Appeals. And knowing me, I probably missed some people, and if so, I apologize. Mike Policho, Mike Policho is here from DTE. Welcome, Mike. And now it's my honor to introduce Michelle Economo Uresti, elected township supervisor in 2008. Now, she has an interesting background because she has a master's degree in public administration from Oakland University, unusual for a township supervisor to have that credential. Now, everybody in this room knows Michelle well, and they know that she has no boundaries in terms of number of hours worked. Nobody could ever claim that Michelle is a slacker. She probably works more hours than any of the 1,242 township supervisors in the state. And I see my friend Ken Macon. Ken Macon is the uh, president of the West Bloomfield Library Board. So Michelle's background with, the, with her master's degree and her business background enables her to serve very well as our township supervisor. She's a hard worker. She's caring. I'm proud to be her friend. So please extend a warm welcome to township supervisor Michelle Economo Uresti. Thank you kindly, uh, Trustee Kaplan, for that warm introduction. And welcome, everyone, to the fifth annual State of the Township Address. This presentation includes a partial list of last year's accomplishments and this year's goals and objectives. The Township Board of Trustees demonstrated the value of working together last year on a great number of proactive projects. I would like to begin by reading the Township's mission statement that was approved by the majority of the current board in 2009. Our mission is to provide high quality, efficient services to ensure the health, safety, and welfare of the community and its natural and fiscal assets. West Bloomfield is the fourth largest township of 1,242 townships in the state with approximately 65,000 residents and 25,000 households. While property values are improving, the township assessments remain approximately 34% lower since a 2008 base year. Historically, township employee wages and benefits have accounted for approximately 79% of expenditures. Since the economic downturn, the township has avoided backfilling more than 25 positions on account of restructuring, streamlining efforts, and automation. Formerly the cash manager in the treasurer department, Teresa Jablonski, accepted the position in my office as the budget and pension manager last year. She made the process relatively smooth in gaining board approval for the 2014 budget, which includes 42 funds and approximately 52 million in general operating revenue and expenditures. Advancements have been, made, have been gained in the budgeting process over the past few years, including information system upgrades and the review and approval of all special revenue funds. Traditionally, traditionally, the budget was representative of 10 key funds, but it has been expanded to cover all special revenue funds, including special assessment districts, SADs, for road improvement projects financed by the township. An SAD committee, which was established last year, resulted in board approval of a policy governing the approval of new special assessment districts for road rehabilitation projects on secondary roads. The Township Board understands the value of maintaining secondary roads and how this correlates with maintaining the integrity of neighborhoods and home values. 
Since townships do not own and maintain any roadways, roadways and the Road Commission of Oakland County prioritizes the maintenance of major road thoroughfares, an increasing number of subdivision associations are pursuing special assessment districts, SADs, for the reconstruction of subdivision streets. The average SAD is $7,000 per household. The township has been in a position to finance several SADs every year and saves each household approximately $1,000 by financing the road rehabilitation projects and not incurring bond issuance costs. Some SAD projects are under consideration for 2014 are the Fox Point Roadway Improvement Project, Aldingbrook Roadway Improvement Project, Maple Creek Roadway Improvement Project, Maple Place Roadway Improvement Project, Stonebridge Roadway Improvement Project, Chimney Hill Roadway Improvement Project, and Willow Farms Stormwater Management Project. <clears throat> Just as important as the condition of our roads are to our home values, so is the Human Resources Director, Denise Mayer, to employee morale. I have recently prepared a new human resources plan which commits the HR department to the five key goals for 2014. Making more tools and resources electronically available to township employees. Conducting a request for proposal for a benefits consultant with expertise on the Affordable Care Act. Conducting a request for proposal for the most comprehensive and affordable health benefits plan since the Affordable Care Act, updating the employee manual for more ease of use, and negotiating with the seven collective union bargaining groups and non-union employees. A personnel committee comprised of three part-time trustees or Chair Lawrence Brown, Trustee Howard Rosenberg, and Trustee Diane Swimmer assist the Human Resources Department with recommending personnel policy changes, job description changes, and evaluating personnel requests to the Township Board of Trustees for consideration. Although the Township is down in overall 25 positions since baseline year 2008, 31 positions were filled due to vacancies last year. For the purpose of succession planning, and administrative oversight, the personnel committee recently approved an assistant fire chief position. With full board support, Clerk Catherine Shaughnessy and I recently completed a successful bond sale and restructuring of retiree pension and health care obligations. Michigan state law allows local governments with a standard and poor's bond rating of AA plus or higher to sell bonds to cover municipal long-term employee liabilities. Several bond rating calls were conducted and the bond rating was reaff reaffirmed. In December 2013, the board approved the sale of 9.2 million in pension obligation bonds and 21.9 million in other employment benefits, OPEB bonds. The primary objective in applying to state treasury for benefit bonds was to fund the entire closed portion of the pension liability to fund 70% of OPEP liability and stabilize long-term expenses and create more financial stability. A supplemental evaluation was recently obtained and the township will receive a net savings of over $500,000 in 2014 for the annual required contribution from the general fund. In addition, the township will earn $325,800 in interest revenue in 2014 as compared to a projected $100,000 in interest the township would have received investing at current interest rates. Last year, the pension board in which I chair completed a review of third-party providers for the 401A Multivestor Deferred Contribution Plan and 457B Deferred Compensation Plan and selected a new consultant, ICMA, for these plans. The transition is almost completed and employees are extremely pleased with the heightened level of education and assistance that is being provided through ICMA. 
Under the direction of Fire Chief Jay Wiseman, the fire department responded to 7,600 calls for service in 2013, a 6% increase from 2012. Of this total, 34% were related to fire, general assistance, or other hazardous conditions, and 66% were attributed to providing EMS rescue and other care-related services. In 2013, the EMS division began a long-awaited refurbishment program for the entire EMS fleet. This effort will save the township almost a half million dollars over the cost of replacing these vehicles completely new. The first ambulance was received at the end of the year. Each ambulance remount is reconditioned with a like new appearance, Wi-Fi, a driver safety feedback module, and a real-time vehicle locator and maintenance interface. Wi-Fi will provide a more secure connection for transmission of, of electronic patient care records to emergency centers, and the driver's feedback module will alert drivers with an audible alarm if they are turning too sharp, stopping too quickly, or traveling too fast. A new EMS data management program was implemented in 2013 at no additional cost. This resulted in improvements in our electronic patient care record system, improvements in our EMS billing platform, and improving our ability to conduct quality initi initiatives and manage operational data. Training is paramount to providing a successful quality emergency response. The first response in a crisis is learned behavior from ongoing training. In 2012, the West Bloomfield Fire Department received 2,955 total fire training hours and 1,790 total EMS training hours. Their hazardous materials team is 11 firefighters strong and they are specially trained for mitigating releases of hazardous materials and we weapons of mass destruction. They received 187 training hours in 2013. West Bloomfield is a member of the Oakland County Hazmat Response Team. The Hazmat team spends a considerable amount of time on inventorying, calibrating, and training in connection with new technologies which constantly become available for detecting gas leaks, radiation, biological and chemical war war warfare agents, and tools which identify unknown material and assist responders with understanding the potential impact on victims and the environment. In 2013, changes were made to redeploy existing resources within the fire department in an effort to better position available manpower and apparatus to meet shifting and growing service demands. Under the direction of Police Chief Mike Patton, the West Bloomfield Police Department responded to 17,770 calls for service in 2013, which is down from 17,867 calls in 2012. Additionally, the West Bloomfield Police Department receives and dispatches police and fire calls from the communities of Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and Sylvan Lake, which resulted in an additional 6,752 calls for service in 2013. That number is a decrease from 6,922 calls in 2012. Myself as Police Commissioner and Police Chief Patton were pl pleased to recently learn that West Bloomfield Township was ranked 12th on the list of Michigan's safest cities by the National Security Organization, SafeWise, and Money Magazine. West Bloomfield is the second largest municipality in Michigan's top 20 safest cities and the safest of any city in the state with a population of at least 60,000. We were also pleased to have board support for seven new police officers in 2013. This is the first time in five years for new hires in the police department following numerous retirements. These new hires demonstrate the township's commitment to maintain public safety staffing levels. Last year, the Secret Service approached the township to devote one police officer toward identity theft and financial fraud cases. Our involvement with the Secret Service has provided the community with the necessary resources to investigate such cases. 
Police say the date for the unveiling of the Fallen Officer Memorial on Friday, May 2nd at noon in honor of Sergeant Patrick O'Rourke. The ceremony will take place in front of the police station. Last year, a new IT director, Harry Palmer, joined the township and has begun to, or has already, completed the following improvements. One, the load balancing of internal resources. Two, upgrades of the virtual server environment with a backup server at a remote location. Three, migration from tape to tape to disk to disk backup system. Four, standardization of workstations. And five, the development of a low cost website upgrade that will be remotely hosted to minimize breaches in security. Last year, many significant changes were made in the areas of building and planning. A new planning director, Chris McLeod, and new building director, John Lipchick, joined the township. The board, staff, and the community have quickly recognized their high standards and passion for excellence. Prior to their arrival, I expanded the role of the Planning Commission to review all commercial development requests prior to administrative approval and their ability to commence amendment committee meetings to revise or strengthen ordinances in response to a recent trend of state deregulation. Significant legal resources were allocated to this purpose last year by creating ordinances to regulate tobacco establishments and sexual oriented businesses as a proactive measure resulting from state direct deregulation. Municipalities across Oakland County have taken similar message, measures to maintain the integrity of their communities. Last year, a town center task force was formed with three elected officials, Trustee Howard Rosenberg as chair, Trustee Lawrence Brown and myself, as well as members of the Planning Commission, Steve Budai and Carmen Santorian, the Director of Parks and Recreation, Dan Navarre, and staff. The board supported the task force recommendation to conduct a market study on the Orchard Lake Road and Haggerty Road business corridors. The study involved soliciting feedback from residents, developers, and the business community about what is desired on these corridors. The market study results recently became available and summarized feedback from outreach activities into six categories of concern or focus. One, traffic and circulation. Two, township policies. Three, aesthetics, character, and identity. Four, pedestrian walkability and safety. Five, economic and business development. And six, town center district size and scope. The town center overlay district ordinance may be amended with consideration of these six areas of concern. The results of this study will also be utilized in the development of the five-year master plan due in 2015 in accordance with the Michigan Planning Enabling Act. In summary, the role of the Planning Commission has been expanded to maintain the integrity of our community and the Town Center Task Force will be modifying the Town Center Overlay District Ordinance language to attract desired businesses. These proactive measures were taken during the market surge last year. Traditionally, the Township has supported family-owned businesses and boutiques over large franchise chains. Many of our residents live and work in the community and patron, patron our many family-owned businesses. Numerous new desirable businesses have recently invested and opened their doors to the public. A mixed-use, two-story development at Maple Road and Orchard Lake Road, where the former gas station was located, now includes a Tim Hortons, Pure Sleep Mattress Store, Jersey Mike Subs, a real estate broker, Sprint Store, and a dentist office. Puerto Restaurant, located on Orchard Lake Road at the former Sea Grill, is a Mexican restaurant and appears to be one of the new hot spots in the area. In my opinion, they have the best fish tacos in the States. 
I recently attended the grand openings for the new Diet Center on Orchard Lake Road and Socialite Bistro on Haggerty Road, where the cuisine is one of the finest and the decor is lively and entertaining. Shoguns, Japanese Steakhouse, recently opened to the public. They are located at Orchard Lake and Maple Road at the former Joe's Crab Shack. While I have not been there yet, I am hearing good things about Shoguns. Leaf and Berry. Uh, tea and Frozen Yogurt Lounge opened on Orchard Lake and Maple Road. Also located at Orchard Lake Road and Maple Road are the Just Girls Boutique and UR Design, a new fine furniture and interior design store, and I have heard the public absolutely rave about these stores. Speaking about a rave sensation, I just recently attended a grand opening with the largest turnout at Diva Jewelry on Haggerty Road and Maple Road. The Orchard Lake Road and 14 Mile Road Gateway to the Township, where the former Dunham's location and gas station are located, will soon include a mixed-use development project of two hotels, a Hampton Inn and a Hilton Extended Stay, with a retail component. On Maple Road between Farmington and Orchard Lake Road at the former Bogarts and E.G. E. Nix location, a retail strip is being considered. The township will soon have a new destination location at the Jewish Community Center with a unique, one-of-a-kind ropes course, and I encourage you to give it a whirl. Look for the first Chris Belly restaurant at the former Little Havana Cigar Shop in the West Bloomfield Plaza at Orchard Lake Road and Maple Road. And we may soon see the first Maple Road Doggy Hotel at the former Firestone location at Maple and Orchard Lake. To accommodate these developments in 2014, the goal is to continue to streamline the building permit process and improve cross-department communications between building planning and environmental service functions. The building department reviewed, processed, and issued 4,869 permits in 2013, slightly down from 5,007 in 2012. These 2013 permits have a total valuation of 51.9 million, as compared to 67 million in 2012. Although the percentage of foreclosed properties in the township is lower than many Southeast Michigan communities, staff is committed to minimizing the effect of vacant properties and preserving the public health and safety in its neighborhoods through the vacant property registration ordinance. The Code Enforcement Department, supervised by Eric Beauchamp, responded to 1,623 complaints, resulting in 5,878 inspections in 2013. This compares to 1,832 complaints and 6,891 inspections in 2012. With limited staff, the Code Enforcement Department is focused on thoroughly researching and closing active code complaints and proactively addressing health and safety concerns. In 2013, focused improvements were made in documenting code enforcement activities and conducting grease trap and water bypass inspections. The Water and Sewer Department is managed by the Water and Sewer Director, Ed Hoppala. The department is comprised of 12 field staff and eight administrative personnel. The department operates under best management practices for a 24-7 operation that includes 376 miles of water mains, 340 miles of sewer mains, and 23 lift station pumping facilities. The water and sewer enterprise budget includes $23 million in revenue and $21.5 million in expenditures. This year will mark the historic achievement of establishing the first comprehensive 20-year water and wastewater system master plan. The majority of this work began last year and the document will be brought for board consideration by summer. Completion of the master plan is a requirement of the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. The Detroit Water and Sewer Department has established fiscal year 2014-2015 rates for all suburban wholesale water customers. West Bloomfield is scheduled to receive a 5.1% increase in its wholesale water rate paid to Detroit, effective July 1, 2014. 
This would translate to an average annual increase of $18 for the water portion of a customer's bill. The use of irrigation systems during peak morning hours is the primary contributing factor to increases in Detroit water rates. Therefore, to minimize rate increases from Detroit, we discourage irrigation systems being automatically set during the morning hours of 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. The Water and Sewer Billing Division historically has been located at the Water and Sewer Facility on Haggerty Road. Over the past few years, these personnel have been located at Town Hall in the Treasurer area until a recent move back to the Haggerty location. This tr transition has occurred for the benefit of operational efficiency and better customer relations. This year, we will recognize the Water and Sewer Department for 50 years of service to the community. The department, in collaboration with the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society, will sell t-shirts to raise funds for a celebration that is planned on July 15 at noon at the Water and Sewer Facility on Haggerty Road. Please record the date as you will want to be sure to attend the Water and Sewer Department 50-year celebration on July 15 from noon to 3 p.m. It will be a family-friendly event with water-related games and contests. Please feel welcome to contact my office for more details or to volunteer with the event planning. Two hazardous material waste recycling day events are scheduled on April 26 and September 20. The Development Services Director, Marshall Labadee, manages the hazmat events as well as grounds and maintenance, county road and SAD projects, environmental and engineering services. The Development Services Department is committed to protecting and enhancing the township's natural environmental features for current and future generations using approaches and solutions based on science, best management practices, collaboration and respect for all stakeholders. The 2013 fiscal year was characterized by an increase in the number of grading and drainage permits issued, inspections and plan reviews, household hazardous waste day recycling event turnout, and special assessment district projects. For the first time in approximately 20 years, an effort has been made to update the wetland and woodland maps. The wetland map was finalized in 2013, and over the past 20 years, the total acreage of wetlands remained relatively unchanged or decreased 1% for a total of 1,400 acres. The woodland map will be finalized this year and has increased over the past 20 years by 10% bringing the acreage of wetlands to 2,871 acres. This year, the Board of Trustees unanimously approved combining the wetland and woodland boards into one environmental board. Large and complex projects completed in 2013 and planned for 2014 are as follows. One, Jamie and Drain Pebble Creek Restoration Project. Two, River Safe, a home and business environmental registration program for those who commit to practicing environmental-based actions related to recycling, home toxic disposal, watershed protection, and woodland protection. Three, continued safety path construction. Four, completion of the 2013 Nash Acres Roadway Improvement Project and three 2014 SAD projects. Five, Civic Center Paving Project with electronic electric charging station, six mosquito control program, seven planned road commission tri-party projects, eight adopting the updated Woodlay overlay district map, and nine facilitating two drainage studies for Drake Road flooding in Franklin, Franklin branch of the Rouge River. Initially launched in 2010, the River Safe program will continue to be promoted again this year. It was developed to encourage more environmental friendly products to be used around the home. Since our township is home to a natural conveyance system comprised of 28 lakes, 150 ponds, 2,871 acres of woodlands, and 1,400 acres of wetlands, a greater commitment by all to minimize or eliminate the use of phosphorus fertilizers and pesticides is critical in maintaining these unique and cherished environmental features. 
The only requirement to receive a River Safe placard with the township's blue hair and logo, which can be placed in a flower garden or on the front lawn, is to pledge to become a River Safe home and to commit to recycling and using more environmental friendly products in and around the home. In 2013, the township completed the Civic Center paving project, which took the better part of the year to complete. The project involved the reconstruction of Civic Center Drive, the access road to the police department, parks and recreation facility, library, and town hall. In addition to the access drive, reconstruction of the parks and recreation library, police, and town hall parking lots were completed. Engineering designs were prepared several years ago, but shel shelved due to the economic downturn. The library and parks and recreation were strong advocates for this project to be completed last year, and they were highly complimentary of the township's project planning and coordination efforts. Last year, the township sought approval from the Road Commission of Oakland County for landscape designs of the Maple Road roundabouts and the landscaping project was completed. In September 2012, the Road Commission contacted me with regard to uncommitted tri-party funds and after application, we received $330,000. As a result, the final stretch of 14 mile road from Country Way to Haggerty Road was widened last fall. Due to the extreme winter weather condition and potholes, state legislators approved one round of risk reserve funds in December and a round of surplus funds this month. The Road Commission for Oakland County submitted 2014 priority list containing numerous road segments for West Bloomfield. One road segment was approved by the state legislature under the first round of risk reserve funds, or an overlay project on Walnut Lake Road from Halstead to Franklin Road. It is important to contact our state legislature, legislators as it is expected that they will evaluate and approve the road segments by June. The Road Commission priority list lists from 83 counties compete on a statewide basis for 115 million for road surplus funds. Senator Mike Kowal and representatives Clint Kesto and Mike McCready are aware and are championing our road needs as identified in the Road Commission's 2014 priority list containing the following road segments. Green Lake Road, from Pontiac Trail to Commerce, Maple Road from Orchard Lake to Covington, Middle Belt Road from 14 Mile to Orchard Lake Road, Commerce Road from Union Lake Road to Orchard Lake Road, Commerce Road over the Green Lake Canal, Putnam Drive over the Walnut Lake Canal, Maple Road over the Franklin Bridge and Rouge River, the road segments in the Federal Aid 2017 submission queue cycle are Maple Road from Drake to Farmington, Drake Road from 14 Mile to Maple, Halstead from Walnut Lake to Pontiac Trail. And I must qualify what it means to be in the submission queue. The road segments me mentioned above on Maple Road and Halstead are rated by the Federal Highway Administration to be in poor condition. Once they are in the queue, it can take several years before they are repaired. The Township Board of Trustees established a road committee that has successfully negotiated an agreement with the Oakland County Road Commission for a boulevard on Orchard Lake Road between 14 Mile and Maple Road as contained in the Northwestern Connector Project Plan. The Road Commission is working with the Township in support of the Orchard Lake Road Boulevard and improved signalization at the Orchard Lake Road and Maple Road intersection instead of a roundabout. The City of Farmington Hills has requested the Oakland County Road Commission for a roundabout at the Orchard Lake Road and 14 Mile Road intersection and the project, known as the Triangle, is on schedule to begin this year. The Township Assessor, Lisa Hobart, oversees a staff of 10 employees. Assessed values remain 35% lower than our baseline year of 2008, although property values are increasing. 
taxable value is limited by the rate of inflation, and although residential property values increased approximately 9% as of December 31, 2013, taxable value has, was limited by the rate of in, inflation, the, by the inflation rate multiplier of 1.6%, and also for any physical changes to the property. Total assessed value since 2008 is as follows, 4.64 billion in 2008. 4.17 billion in 2009, down 10.2%. 3.5 billion in 2010, down an additional 15.8%. 3.23 billion in 2011, down an additional 7.9%. 3.17 billion in 2012, down an additional 2%. 3.2 billion in 2013, up 0.43% and 3.45 billion in 2014, up 7.2%. This increase has been calculated since the March Board of Review. At the request of the Tuskegee Airmen, a Tomb of the Unknown Soldier monument was unveiled to the public last November on Veterans Day. All of the cost associated with the monument was donated. The Belfour Restoration Company donated the monument and Shenandoah Country Club donated a bench. The monument was engraved rather quickly for the deadline of Veterans Day and efforts are underway to add military and public safety logos. The township's fifth annual wellness day, which is open to the public, is scheduled for Wednesday, May 14, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. At this year's fifth annual wellness event, the new West Bloomfield Diet Center will be launching a community weight loss challenge. Henry Ford Hospital will hold a two-hour cooking demonstration with sample tasting, and the local sportscaster and West Bloomfield resident, Terry Foster, will be the keynote speaker at 11.30 a.m. and available throughout the event for book signing and autographs. Once again, the fifth annual Wellness Day is scheduled for Wednesday, May 14, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at West Bloomfield Town Hall. As you can see, the township has a rather lengthy list of challenges, goals, and objectives. I would like to take this time to personally thank the Board of Trustees, staff, and Board and Commission members who assist with accomplishing, the, accomplishing these goals and objectives and so much more. Most importantly, I would like to thank the residents who allow me to serve the community. As always, questions can be directed to my office. Thank you very kindly for viewing the 2014 5th Annual State of the Township Address.